And in case this is going up on YouTube, hello, welcome back. Hello, hello, people. Mhm. Mm <laughs> Greetings, Earthlings. Huh. We're doing some more work on our short story collection. We're diving back into Scribe and the Doctor, and the agenda is to perhaps work up some text. So. Yes. Yeah, so so far, with every next round, we are homing in. Uh, with more specific work. So in the first two sessions we analyzed, well, scrutinized, well, demolished the existing first draft and built up a uh, uh, not analysis, an outline uh, based based on uh, based on that discussion and then last time the session number whatever uh, we picked apart one particular scene or I think it, I think the way it works is that I'm picking it apart and Nux is quietly weeping <laughs> <laughs> but now because of uh, my evil ways I will have to help to build it up so yeah uh, at first we were dealing with the whole story and uh, ended up with a kind of sort of outline and then we uh, jumped in on the scene level and started uh, restructuring and, and rejiggling what's, what's happening in a particular scene and uh, now we're trying to come up with a new text for that particular scene I think that, that about covers it Yep, but unfortunately I think the notes in this one are quite disjointed <laughs> because we talked about moving so Scribe does his thing he dumps all the data in his suit into his ship mm -hmm. and then he leaves the ship right and that's mm -hmm. when he does all his body checks because of that all that, all the notes for that sort of stuff I think uh, um, you might need to rearrange some uh, actions yeah. or more like the actions remain you just need to rearrange the uh, location of those actions which ultimately does not matter as much so maybe yeah just leave yourself some notes and pull everything under those beacons accordingly oh and also uh, I came up with a random idea I want to add something. Okay. Uh, I want to add technical doodads to Scribe's outfit. So he should have some detachable sensors or like mic micro sensor drones that he sends ahead in the uh, in the environment that he's in. Because as as we have established, the Scribe's work is a dangerous one. They often delve into unimaginable dungeons to get the precious bits and bytes so uh, this doesn't uh, change much in the structure but uh, it means we could drop in a note somewhere that uh, as he is uh, performing his suit check he is sending his little helpers around the to, to gather the immediate uh, information from uh, from their surroundings and uh, then upon uh, upon the alarm that the life signs are dropping and upon the alarm that somebody else is nearby that somebody should catch one of the uh, one of the little helpers because that somebody would have heightened reflexes now wouldn't they mm -hmm. so somebody catches and squashes one of the little helpers which means like the game is on Scurb dumps his <laughs> fix that there we go and uh, one thing that uh, we established, I established that we, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I decide what's good for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one one thing that uh, that we need for the scenery 
is to figure out uh, what the setting actually is as in on planetary level because that will affect what the scribe can see so instead of saying that moonlight poured in from a collapsed dome we have to jiggle it around to fit the actual place where they are mm -hmm. so it's more like the swirls of a gas giant overhead does, does the idea of a moon base does that sound no that's perfectly fine for me as, long, right. as, as long as we build a uh, an interesting description around it um, I'm cool with the moon base and also let me type that idea down <laughs> this is my daily bullshit quota. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and another point I raised while we were going through this, I don't think was mentioned anywhere, is uh, you asked what what is this place? Is it a public place or a private place? And I mm -hmm. said it was made to look mm -hmm. like a normal place. So we're going to say made to look like a sort of public place, but upon co closer inspection. Mm -hmm. That's obviously not what it is. Yeah, so it's like the, the description or like the way Scribe notices what's around him should start off as uh, a flight terminal equipped uh, equipped to receive a hundred uh, ships a day, uh, and then he disc then he for. Uh, Proceeds to describe the uh, specifics on the of the interior, and when he reaches when his uh, visual feeds reach the guard poofs, it's like all 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 checkpoints are uh, unmanned, uh, equipped. Hang on, reverse, and then then he, he there there should be some sort of uh, hiccup. Like uh, pronounced hiccup, maybe he will, uh, uh, maybe he will uh, direct his uh, uh, floating eye. <laughs> 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 yeah, so his uh, visual fr uh, visual feed uh, source, uh, he will he will do a double take somewhere, and he will double check, and then he will notice that all the checkpoints are equipped exactly the same down to the last coffee stain <laughs> And this is one of the notes where we've made a note here that says it's a serious discrepancy so this would be something that he says out loud one of those yes, times. Yes, yes. So he should mumble to himself this place is not what it's made out to look like. And at this point, I think this is when the uh, uh, sixteen then catches the drone. Uh, not yet. Uh, okay. I, I would I would build up the danger levels here. So basically, now the scribe knows that uh, this ain't Kansas yo. So he should uh, he he proceeds with extra caution. So he uh, he will send the visual capture drone farther ahead, or maybe a few. 
So he will he will send his uh, mobile sensors ahead, and uh, and this is where he tries to stay hidden. Uh, blends in with the uh, with the flickering shadows, and uh, and this is where the alert about life signs dropping should kick in. Okay, so this is building the danger quite nicely. And uh, and when the alert about life signs from three to two, two to one. Uh, okay, so uh, tangent. Uh, the uh, life sign drop from three to two might uh, might happen earlier, and uh, this might this could be something that that he just sort of uh, notes, but it doesn't cause alarm yet because this might uh, might also be a fluke. So it's like counting three, no two life signs. But now the uh, the life sign drop from population drop from two to one should be very alarming. So it's like, uh, okay, something's wrong here. And uh, let uh, me hang on, hold a sec. <gasps> when this first happens, three to two, two uh, scribe uh, could just be a fluke, like, not. Not as noteworthy. Yeah, so it is. It is still odd, but at that point, it might be just a matter of uh, calculating it wrong, or like a, a matter of uh, sensor glitch. In fact, uh, when the counter hits uh, hits from two to one. Then it's like, yeah, that's that's definitely no no sensor glitch. So before the the first life sign drop could uh, could put him a little bit on edge and make him extra vigilant. And this time, he he really knows that something's up. So he, he could he could make a note. Definitely not a glitch. This place is dangerous. Proceeding with extreme caution. Okay. And once I think I've got all that down. I'm <laughs> really bad at spelling definitely. <laughs> I know, right? Me too. <laughs> and once he has determined that the danger level is serious shit, uh, he will proceed sending his uh, sensors ahead. And then somebody catches one of his sensors and... and uh, and crushes it, and he might get like a glimpse of somebody's somebody's eye or somebody's toe or something. So he he should get a glimpse of the room or, or the the next area where he actually meets uh, sixteen. But uh, but he, but uh, but at this point he's facing some limitations. Nice work, fingers. You're doing well today. <laughs> Although you have misspelled serious, so I'm going to have to dock points for that. <laughs> there we go. I'm sneakily eating candy here. <laughs> What point did we get up to in this first section? We got up to... I don't oh, think they met yet. They ah. haven't quite met. This is... The, we got up to the point where we need to introduce the language uh, communication oh, yeah. barrier. Mm -hmm. 
and also uh, thinking ahead uh, let's try to this is for the back burner okay try try to think of alternate names for Baima all right yeah that's uh yeah and also what might uh, might be the local language I mean you tell me what you want to hear and I will invent techno babble to cover that when I say uh, the people that went missing around Bayama, I think there's not many settlements there. It's a system that people sort of pass through. Um, there might be like one or two stations to get supplies and that sort of thing. But then how would they know that people are going missing? Who, Scribe? No, I mean the locals. Oh, when convoys and transport ships aren't arriving where they're supposed to be arriving and that sort of thing when people aren't checking in and making the deliveries and that sort of thing this was my back thinking now this is obviously <laughs> we need to discuss this be gentle I'm feeling raw <laughs> um, so yeah by Emma in my current headcanon is another one of these sort of like um, it's practically a dead system almost mm. like as oh, what okay. I call a dead system and but there's that group of ser servos reclaimers hanging around there okay so it's uh, like a frontier area I think so yeah it, I'm yeah yeah so so in a sense if you wanted to uh, grab some random locals for experiments you would either grab them from a very highly populated area where there are so many people that nobody gets to keep track or you get them from uh, very lonely areas where there's nobody to report that something's mm. wrong and I, th I think I see by Emma as the latter okay uh, should we should we make a note of this no I think this is just sort of okay background diddle daddle and now thinking more on the background mm, who might be having or like which uh, which homeworlds or which human civilizations might have their presence in there because this this will this will help to uh, to do a language thing Bayema is situated between your space and a bunch of indie sort of indie colonies and in like Gatlin, Arokia and Windan are mostly populated by independent factions and then okay. on the other side you've got the your uh, system of Yurinda which we needed to change the name of you weren't happy with the <laughs> names of the Yorth Federation so we need to change <laughs> all of those uh, but for current placeholder name, Yurinda is next to, and then around it, there's a lot of dead systems as well, like Fresta and Urgu. But again, we've got to think about this in 3D terms as well. Like the map I'm referring to is 2D. Mm -hmm. By Emma could be like right down the bottom of the quote-unquote 3D box. It could be right mm -hmm. at the top, you know. So the point is, it's a frontier area. Mm-hmm. It is almost outside the... I'm so sorry for the eating noises. I wasn't thinking. Okay. <laughs> for for the for the viewers, I mean. <laughs> oh, right, right, yeah. yeah. So, it is, uh, it is almost outside the practical borders of this whole human uh, civilizationized bubble. Mm -hmm. Like, almost outside the borders of the... practical borders of the uh, human colonized cluster. It's up towards the void cloud as well, so I mean. Ah, uh -huh, okay. So weird shit can also happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this this might actually be another uh, factor why people from this area are of particular interest to Servo, because they some people here might have had some first-hand uh, uh, experience with the cloud, maybe? 
Yeah, possibly. But yeah, basically the the location and the cloud proximity and the frontierness are sort of the the keywords here. Hmm. And language wise, this is a candy store then. <laughs> of course. That's fun. Uh, yeah. Of course the uh, the main uh, the main thing with the language barrier I think is that uh, uh, sixteen might not have the uh, uh, the earbud or earworm or, or whatever protocol no like as part of as part of his uh, his exper the experiments run on him his uh, um, personal electronics are not there or are not functioning so if in normal situation they would just uh, talk as usual and and let the translator do that, do its thing, then in this case it turns out that oh no, the usual isn't working. So it's 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 not a matter of oh you and I speak the different language, it's more like oh no, your uh, your Google do that doesn't work. So I will try to guess what your lo local second language might be. And uh, I think this actually will lead us straight into the necessity of uh, uh, of at least uh, referring to uh, a few other uh, big languages. So it's like standard is the uh, is the second language of all second languages, but there will be also the local trade languages. Mm -hmm. One of my Concepts is francophone, which is <laughs> which is uh, French-based, the far future French-based uh, uh, trade language, and then there should be one for uh, since we're uh, near your, there should be one uh, loosely loosely based on Russian and German. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it of course means that uh, I can uh, uh, I can come up with some uh, bullshit uh, semi-Russian uh, <laughs> uh, expressions. I think you're going to have a, a bit of fun with this. Well, I hope <laughs> you have fun with it. <laughs> and and maybe maybe not even uh, like uh, plain modern Russian, but more like uh, some sort of Slavic. Uh, Numbers based on Slavic logic, and uh, and uh, and um, like I, I think the Central European Slavic languages might even be better source here because they are like in between all the all the Germanic and Slavic influences. So they are like they are already uh, an interesting blend or an interesting uh, result. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, from this, I think we might also be able to potentially, I don't know, because I don't know enough about 16's background, but we might be able to extrapolate what they locally call Bayema mm -hmm. and use that in that instance. Should we take a quick break here to bank the recording? Yes, and also I am about to do some Google Translate shenanigans. I mean, as as enthusiastic as I am of showing what I do when I when I mangle the uh, foreign languages, <laughs> 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 it's it's going to take some tries and it's going to take some time. So let's take a break here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. We should resume in the next one, I, I presume. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bye.